putting it all together into a model of what a oldest papyrus. Or what, well, here is the oldest surviving papyrus copy of Euclid. Now, aren't you happy to see this? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are in week number seven of our history of Rome. We're up on the Palatine Hill. Isn't that a pretty picture? Uh, looking down the pathway to the Colosseum. Wonderful picture. Uh, and the Palatine is one of the most evocative places in all of Rome. You can wander among the pines and uh, sit down on a fallen column and muse on uh, Augustus and Livia and the whole imperial dynasty and think about Rome and you'll be sitting there in 2015 uh, 2,500 years after all of these things we're talking about here uh, on Wednesday night. Uh, we can just pause briefly and remember where we've been. We're in the seventh week of fall quarter. If you think about it, we're going to start way back before the foundation of Roman week one, which we did. Uh, back, way, way back, a thousand years before. And then we had nights and we talked about the foundation of Rome, the birth of Rome. When did it really start? Maybe 753 B.C. Uh, and then we moved forward into the growth of the Republic and the growth of the Roman state and population. And finally, now in the period we've been talking about in these last few weeks, the confrontation with Carthage. And that confrontation goes on for we could really say it goes on for a hundred years and defines what Rome will become. Uh, and then by 200 BC, Rome has won. Now, we're in week 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and so we're progressing from 200 BC down to zero. And as we do, the most important question that we will think about, and we can think about it tonight with our play, we have another play to talk about tonight, but as we talk about it, uh, we can think about how is Rome changing? How is Rome changing from 300 B.C. to 200 and then down into the first century? Now, we all know, we probably all know, that uh, on 40, in 44 B.C., March 15, 44 B.C., the Roman state changes completely in a radical, shocking moment, the assassination of Caesar. And after, it's different. And in the next few decades, it, it changes dramatically. And by uh, 5 or 6 or 10 AD, Rome is now not a republic anymore. Rome is something different. We can talk about the words. We can talk about the description. So we have a few weeks here that we will be looking at the progress from 200 B.C. down to zero. What exactly in those 200 years is happening so that by the last decade of those 200 years, the Roman Republic is gone? Did people know that it was gone? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Their most brilliant writer, orator, Cicero, uh, told them for years and years and years that they were losing the Republic. So again and again and again, they were warned. And again and again, various crises alerted them to what was happening. So as we go through week 7, 8, 9, and 10, you watch and you begin to think about what exactly happened to the Republic in this period of time. Because everybody who has ever studied the history of Rome wants to know. Everybody wants to know.